When my husband graduated from university, which was 1963, he was a master, and um, he got a job at the General Motors company, which was then really flourishing, as, a, a, as the assistant controller when he graduated from McMaster. And so we went to St. Catharines with two little children by then, and um, we knew that we didn't want to live in St. Catharines. So we drove down to Niagara-on-the-Lake, and there was this perfect little village. And I may tell you, as we drove down the main street, this was 1963, it said Shaw Festival on a little banner that went right across the street, two weeks, July something or other to, you know, the two weeks that it, that it was. And that was the second year of the, that it had been held. I had been working, I should say, when we moved in 1963 and were neighbors of Brian Doherty's. He asked me, you know, whether I was interested in coming to work for them and uh, well yes of course I was because I grew up in Kitchener and went to Stratford at an early age when they were still performing in the tent and I just thought I have to I have to make costumes like that <laughs> so I mean talk about dreams coming true here I was in the next festival town and so I I started the the year before they had rented costumes from Toronto from a man called Webb Catherwood and um, the year that I came uh, in 1964 we did still do some rentals but uh, I also got to make a few costumes one for Betty Layton in the apple cart and I think another one for Susan Clark uh, who was a Canadian actress but had gone to Hollywood um, and she was in Man and Superman. We did a sort of just the um, the shortened version of, of Man and Superman that was in 1964. The costumes that I made in 1964 I made at home on my Singer sewing machine and then the next year I had uh, made a very dear friend, a lady called uh, Betty Taylor, who is alas no longer with us. She passed away two years ago. But she had a little store on the corner of Regent uh, and, Kings and uh, Queen Street called The Yardstick, which was a fabric store. So uh, the artistic director at that point, I think I'm, I'm maybe skipping up to, let's say, 1967 because uh, we, we still did some renting. We also had a little collection of costumes um, that we put on people, you know, like men's shirts and things like that. Um, but by 1967, uh, with Paxton Whitehead at the helm as artistic director, we were still at the courthouse and Betty Taylor's shop had a back room to it which was big enough to put two sewing machines and a cutting table in. And Hilary Corbett, who was the uh, costume designer that they hired, was Hilary, Betty, and me. And we worked in that back room for that season, which was the um, season of Expo. And we did a lovely production of Major Barbara, which we then took to Expo and so made all the costumes in, in Betty's back room. And um, Betty also had to keep working her store. So whenever the bell tinkled and the door opened and someone came in, one of us who was not busy at the time would go out and serve the customers and cut lengths of fabric for them or sell them threads or buttons or whatever they needed. So it was, it was all very, um, challenging but lots of fun you know and our fitting room was Betty's washroom and I'll never forget getting Paxton in there for a fitting for Arms and the Man I think it was and there was Paxton trying to get his clothes on in the bathroom and then he'd come out and and Hillary would fuss around because she was the designer and say well I this needs to come in or that needs to come in so it was all very very humble beginnings I must say to what we have now um, you know this fantastic wardrobe that has 45 people working in it. There were three of us, so.